Hello everybody, this video is going to be about specific heat. Specific heat is how much heat something can absorb. Different materials will have different specific heats. Before we really get into starting this lesson, I do want to give you a little bit of a reminder about units of temperature. So we are used to, in science, using Celsius. There is a different unit of temperature called Kelvin, which we sometimes use. We like Kelvin because Kelvin measures the molecular movement in a more direct way than Celsius or Fahrenheit. So at zero Kelvin, there is no molecular movement. What that means is we're never going to have a negative temp temperature. Zero is as low as it gets. And we've never been able to get any material down to zero Kelvin. We've gotten very, very close, but we've never been able to get all the way to absolute zero. Some years, if there's time, we'll watch a documentary about the people who are trying to get down to absolute zero. It's a pretty interesting uh, branch of science. So in order to convert back and forth between Kelvin and Celsius, you use the equation that you see up there in red. Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Now, in thermochemistry, it's very typical to use Celsius, but because we sometimes use Kelvin for other topics, you may have to sometimes convert. So just something to keep in mind, and don't forget that we can go back and forth between Kelvin and Celsius. I am not going to ask you to go back and forth between those and Fahrenheit. We don't really use Fahrenheit. If I ever needed you to convert, we would just look it up online. I mean, I don't never even remember what the equation is. It's so rarely used. So you do not need to worry about Fahrenheit. All right, so moving on for specific heat, a more official definition is the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of something by one degree Celsius. If I have a metal cube and I want the temperature of that metal cube to go up one degree and the cube weighs one gram, I'm going to measure how much energy it takes for that little one gram sample to have its temperature go up one degree Celsius. That's describing the amount of energy that material can hold onto before the molecules start moving so much that the temperature goes up. So depending on the substance, it might be able to hold on to just a little bit of energy, or it might be able to hold on to a lot of energy. So if we want to do calculations with specific heat, we're going to use the units joules, which is a measure of energy, divided by grams times Celsius. The way we say this is joules per gram C. The amount of energy one gram can absorb when it goes up one degree Celsius. That's how we get those kind of funny units. So the equation that we use is called M cat. We say Q equals M cat. It's kind of a silly phrase. You know, there's no A, but the delta symbol here kind of looks like an A, so that's how we get to that little rem uh, mnemonic reminder, MCAT. And so Q is the energy lost or gained, M is the mass of your sample, C is the specific heat for that material, and delta T is the change in temperature. It can either be going up and getting hotter, or it can be going down and cooling, cooling down. So if you look at this, I've kind of expanded this to show you that delta T is always going to be the final temperature minus the starting temperature. I would for sure write this version down too, because sometimes we forget how we find delta T. So I'd write that down. Next thing I want to do is I want to think about whether our numbers should be positive or negative because that's a pretty big deal in the thermochemistry chapter. We care a lot about the positive and negative symbols because that tells people which direction the energy is going. So we're going to have a chart that looks like this. And we're going to try to figure out how to fill this out. 
So, if something is gaining heat, okay, the object, the system, the thing that we care about, okay, if it is gaining heat, it's called endothermic. If something is losing heat, we call that exothermic. If something is gaining energy, think about what the symbol the plus or minus on delta T should be. If your object is absorbing energy, you're going to end at a final temperature that's higher than you started. So your delta T, when you do final minus initial, should turn out to be positive. If our equation is Q equals M cat, Q ends up being positive. If mass is positive, specific heat is positive, and our um, delta T is positive, then Q has to be positive. Specific heats are always positive because it's a measure of how much energy can be absorbed. It has to be positive. Compare that to exothermic. If we lose heat, we're going to end at a lower temperature than we started. So final minus initial is going to end up giving us a negative number. If I plug a negative number into my MCAT equation, Q is going to end up being negative also. So if I see a Q value that's negative, that tells me right away, oh, that must be exothermic. Right? We can look at the positive and negative signs, and it tells us a lot of information. I would write down a little note that says that mass and specific heat are always positive. We're never going to have a negative mass. We're never going to have a negative specific heat. All right, before we get into the practice problems, what I would like to do is I would like to kind of go over what is required when showing our work. For these problems, we have a lot of units and things can get a little bit crazy looking. So let's try to go over what you need to do in order to show your work for this topic. You're gonna have a couple of choices. You're gonna have a choice for how you show your units, and you're gonna have a choice for how you show your algebra, okay? I don't care which combo of these things you use, all right? So for units, you could, if you want, put the units into your math equation. So you would plug your units into your Q equals MCAT equation, like this. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of hate that because it gets really messy. It, there's so many units here and canceling things out gets tough. So personally, what I like to do is I like to just list all the variables in a row and then I like to do all the math as if it were just math without my units. So if you list your variables and you put your units on your variables like this, then you can just put the numbers into your equation. You have to show me somehow that you understand what units go with which variable. Up here, I can see that you understand which units belong where. And down here, I can see that you understand which units belong where. So it doesn't matter to me which one of these you want to do. For the algebra, what I like to do is I like to plug everything in, and then I like to rearrange it. That's what I like. Some people struggle with that. Um, sometimes people prefer to rearrange your equation and then plug in your numbers. So up here, I like doing this version, right? I like putting in my numbers and then solving for my delta t. Some people would rather rewrite the equation and then plug their numbers in. So it doesn't matter to me which way you do it, but you've got to have your units somehow shown, and you have to show me where your numbers are going. You've got to show me a little bit of your algebra. You cannot just go from a list of numbers to magically having an answer. I need some kind of proof that you did some type of algebra, okay? So let's do some practice. These are usually going to be word problems. It's going to sound something like this. 
how much heat is needed to raise the temperature of 10 grams of a substance from 40 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees if the specific heat is 3.8 joules per gram C. So let's read through and we're going to underline what we're solving for and we're going to circle any of the numbers they give us to use. So how much heat is needed? Okay, I'm going to underline that. That's what I'm looking for. I know I have 10 grams. That's my mouse. Delta T, I'm going to use these temperature values. I'm going to subtract them. And specific heat, they told me what it is. So I'm going to use my Q equals MC delta T. And I plug it in. You can see here Q equals M C delta T mass times specific heat times my delta T. If you look, my grams cancel. And if you look over here, my Celsius cancels. So I'm left with joules, which makes sense because I'm solving for an energy. One thing you want to look at is whether or not this answer comes out to be positive or negative. If you notice, this is positive. That's telling me that it's heating up, it's absorbing energy, it is endothermic. That object is heating up, it is absorbing energy. If you would rather list your variables for the practice problems, you can. For this PowerPoint, I am going to show it this way just to show you how the units cancel because I want you to see how that works. But if you want to list them out instead, totally fine. If you do your algebra in a different order than I do, totally fine. As long as you're showing some work, you will be fine. All right, let's do another practice problem. This time we have a 50 gram piece of hot metal put into cold water. The metal transfers 5,000 joules of energy to the cold water. The specific heat of the metal is six joules per gram C. What is the change in temperature of the metal? We're looking for delta T of the metal. So, you have a Q value right here. You have an M value. You have a specific heat value. And you are solving for delta T. Why don't you plug those in and see what you come up with? What is the change in temperature of the metal? You can pause if you need some time to figure it out. All right, let's see how this went. There was a bit of a trick here. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but if you think about the story of the problem, the metal is cooling down, isn't it? So this isn't really a 5,000. This needs to be negative 5,000, okay? You have to figure out to put the negative sign there. That's tricky, isn't it? Would it be nice if we always told you it was negative? Sure, but that's just not how we do things. If we tell you something cools down, if we tell you something releases energy, you have to put the negative there yourself, okay? So this is where your numbers should have ended up. I'm going to divide both sides by 50 and both sides by 6 so that I can get rid of them and be left with just my delta T. That way these things cancel. I'll be left with delta T. Now let me show you over here how all these weird crazy units work out. So, joules on top and joules on bottom are going to cancel. They're going to go away. 
Now, grams down here and grams on the bottom of this fraction are going to cancel, and they're going to go away. What's the only unit you're left with? Celsius, which makes sense because what are you solving for? You're solving for something related to temperature. If you have Celsius on the bottom of this fraction, which is on the bottom of this fraction, if you remember from algebra, your, your Celsius is going to flip up to the top. It's going to end up where you want it. So in my calculator, what I would do would be negative 5,000 divided by 50 and 6, and I end up with delta T. When you're all done, you're going to find out that that piece of metal cooled down by 16.7 degrees Celsius. The temperature dropped 16.7 degrees. The metal's temperature got lowered by that amount. You have to either put the negative sign here, or you need to say that all in words. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather just put a negative sign here. I don't want to have to write a little paragraph every time. Just put a negative sign. If it needs a negative, and you don't put the negative, it is wrong. If your answer should be positive and you put a negative, your answer is wrong because it's not showing that you understand which direction the energy is being transferred. And that's really important. All right, another one. Here we go. This is going to be our last one, okay? So, a two gram sample was heated from 260 Kelvin to 300 Kelvin. It absorbed 52 joules of energy. What is the specific heat of this metal? Now, there's a little bit of something weird here. Does anybody notice what it might be? If you notice, I gave you Kelvin. But specific heat comes in Celsius. So you have a choice. You could convert these into Celsius. Or if you think about it, this is a change in temperature, right? And a change of one degree Kelvin is the same as a change in one degree Celsius, okay? When you subtract them, you end up with exactly the same subtraction. And so sometimes you may see people not bother to convert their temperatures. They're being a little bit lazy because they're going to get the same number anyways. But really what you should do is this. Your 260 minus 273, we find out that 260 Kelvin is the same as negative 13 degrees Celsius. 300 Kelvin is the same as 27 degrees Celsius. So when I do my MCAT, I should use these for my delta T. You have M. We don't know what C is. We have delta T that we'll be able to figure out. And we told you what Q is. It tells you it was absorbed, so you know that Q is positive. Why don't you take a minute and try to plug everything in and see if you can figure out what the specific heat is. You can pause if you need more time. All right, let's see how that went. Q equals M C delta T, final minus initial. Do you notice how we have this weird double negative here? All right, this over here, by the way, is positive because it's heating up. And then over here, we have this double negative. You can just put a plus sign instead, right? Minus a minus turns into plus. I like to leave it like this because a lot of times on my answer keys, people will ask me, wait, why was there a positive sign there? Isn't it subtraction? So if I say minus a minus like this, even though that looks a little funny, 
usually people can kind of follow my answer keys better. So that's why I like to do it that way. So I'm going to divide both sides by all this to try to isolate my C. 27 minus negative 13 is the same as 40. If you had done 300 Kelvin minus 260 Kelvin, you would have gotten 40 also. That's what I was trying to tell you about when I was saying that not everybody's going to show converting to Celsius here because the delta ends up the same no matter what. So you're going to get 40 there no matter what. Divide both sides. Now look at your units over here. Well, first these cancel, right? Specific heat. Do any of these units cancel? I end up with joules per gram C, which is what I should end up with. Plug it in your calculator, and you end up with 0.65 joules per gram C. A lot of specific heats are very small numbers. Water specific heat, 4.18, is pretty high for a material. So it's not wrong to get small numbers like this. This is very common. Not a lot of material can hold on to energy without the temperature going up. It, most things have pretty low specific heats. You can use your specific heat to figure out what metal you have. Specific heat is unique for each substance. That's why it's called specific, right? Specific to the material. So if you calculate a specific heat, you could look in a big chart and you could figure out what metal you had. So that's something that we can do in a lab is I can give you an unknown metal, you figure out what the specific heat is, and you can figure out what that metal was. All right. Now for your practice problems real quick for worksheet number one, I am going to ask that for the first four questions, you must circle the variables and underline what you're solving for. Or if you'd rather use two different color highlighters or something like that, that's fine too. But you need to mark up your questions for the first four. After that, you don't have to do that unless you want to, okay? It is sometimes overwhelming for people to have so many numbers in a question. And so marking your question up has been shown to help people get things correct more often. So we are gonna practice it. You do need to show your work. Remember the options I gave you. Somewhere there need to be units and somewhere there needs to be algebra shown, okay? All right, everybody, that is it for this lesson. I hope that was helpful, bye.